Um, so we are going to do inscribed angles now. Um, so first thing you need to know is what an inscribed angle is. So let me show you an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is when the angle has a vertex on the circle. So like this, okay, your vertex is here on the circle. Um, we would call this angle right here an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle. Okay, vertex is on the circle. With that then, you get what's called the intercepted arc. So you have an arc, okay, right here. Um, we call that the intercepted arc. Okay, and the intercepted arc is just the arc that that angle opens up to. So where your angle cuts through, the intercepted arc is the arc that we're talking about, um, the arc that is between those two rays, okay? Um, so there is what's called the in, uh, inscribed angle theorem, and here's what it says. If I have that same setup... Um, so your center is, none of those are necessarily diameters, okay? Just chords. Um, what the theorem says is if I have angle A, B, C, the measure of that angle will always be half as much as its intercepted arc. So if I would say the measure of angle A, B, C, it's going to equal half of arc A, C. Okay. That means, for instance, if this arc is, oh, let's see. Let's say this is a 66 degree arc right here. What would angle B have to be? 33, right? It's half of the arc. So if my arc is 66, then my angle is 33. Okay, that's called the inscribed angle theorem. I won't ever ask you to name it. But when you have an inscribed angle, it's always half as much of the arc across from it. Okay, it's intercepted arc. So I'm going to give you a picture that uses that, but in a much busier setup. Um, and I think that's part of what makes these problems a little bit challenging at times, is you really just have to see what it is they're trying to get you to see when there's a bunch of lines cutting through everywhere. So um, I'm going to draw you a picture. Do your best to draw it similar to mine. Here's what we have. And I'm sorry if this is not perfectly to scale, but I will try to be somewhat to scale. Ooh, that's not where I want it. Really? So try to draw those lines in as best you can. Um, this angle here is B degrees. That's this angle. Um, this angle is 52 degrees. This arc is A degrees. And this arc is 56 degrees. Okay, um, so you kind of have to decode this a bit in terms of what lines are matching up with what parts. Um, so let's just start with B, 
I'd say B is the simpler one to work with. Um, if you look at angle B, okay, angle B goes here to here. So what is the intercepted arc for that angle? It's the 56, right? The arc between those two rays is 56 degrees. So if my arc is 56, then B is half of that 56, right? The intercepted arc is twice as much. The angle is half of its arc. Um, so angle B would be 28 degrees. Does that make sense? Okay, so then look at A. What can we use to find arc A? Not divided by two, but you're on the right track, right? Here's my 52. My 52 opens from here oh, to here. No. Um, so here's what you have to see from this, guys. You have where 52 opens up, your intercepted arc is this, right? Can anyone tell me how big that arc is? It is 56 plus A. It's also, who said? Someone over here. Times two, right. So this angle doubled is that arc, right? Because 52 is half of that arc. So if we double 52, you get 104 degrees. That is this arc, 104 degrees, the whole thing, okay? That means that 56 plus A has to equal 104 degrees. So we're just going to take away the 56. And you get that A is 48 degrees. OK, does that make sense? So it's, I feel like it's a lot of like seeing it correctly. Um, which can be a little bit challenging. Okay, let's try another one. Sound like water being poured. Okay, um, if I want to know the measure of each angle, so let's say this is X, this is Y, this is Z, and this is W. Um, I want to know each one of those inscribed angles, right? Their vertex is on the, the circle, so it's an inscribed angle. Anyone see something you can do? Let's start with X. If we're going to start at X, that is an inscribed angle. What is your intercepted arc for that angle? So if you look where X is, right, this angle here. So your intercepted arc is what? 190, right? It's the 100 and the 90. So that means that X is going to be half of its intercepted arc, 100 plus 90. So half of 190 would make X, or the measure of angle A in this case, 95 degrees. Do you see that? Okay, let's go to W. What's the intercepted arc for W? Y. 
100 and 106 together, right? So W goes from here to here, which means your intercepted arc there is 100 plus 106. Okay, that's my green in this situation. Um, so we would say W is half of 100 plus 106. So half of 206 means W is going to be 103 degrees. Oh, I picked up my ruler. Okay. Um, are you seeing this? Because all four of them, you're doing the exact same thing, just on a different angle with a different arc. Do you see it right now? Hopefully. Um, how about Y? If we look at Y, Y opens up here to here, okay, which means my intercepted arc is that. So for y, we're going to say angle y is half of 90 plus 64. Um, so half of 154. So that comes out to, yeah, um, so that comes out to 77 degrees for that one. Um, and now you have an option here of how you find your last one. That's a quadrilateral, and we know three of the angles. So you could do 360 minus the first three, and you'd be left with the last one, right? Or you can just keep with the system we've been doing. We have angle Z opening up here. So that's 64 and 106. Oops, sorry. It's picking up my ruler again. Um, so you could just do that Z is half of 64 plus 106, so half of 170. Yeah, um, which would make Z 85 degrees. Okay. Um, I want to just show you something real quick. If you look at X and Z, um, X and Z. What do you notice about those two numbers? They're 10 degrees off of each other. What do they add up to? 180. Okay. Now look at W and Y. So that's coming. That's the next theorem we're going to talk about right now. Um, <coughs> angles across from each other like that are supplementary. Um, so there are three little add-ons to that inscribed angle theorem. That is one of them. I'm going to tell you all three of them right now and show you a picture of all three. Um, and then we will do a few examples. Okay, so the first one says two inscribed angles. That intercept the same arc. are congruent. Okay, here's what that means. If you have a circle with an angle here and then an angle here, pretend those hit at the same end point here. So they both hit with an arc here. Right? This is the intercepted arc for both of those angles. If their intercepted arc is the same, then those angles have to be the same. Right? We would say if this is our setup, angle 1 and angle 2 have to be congruent because they share the same arc. If the arcs are the same, the angles have to be half of that, which means the angles have to be the same. Okay, So that's the first corollary. Um, and you'll see an example of that in just a minute. Um, second corollary, second add-on says an angle inscribed in a semicircle. How big is a semicircle in terms of degrees? Less than 90. Semicircle is a half circle. 
180, right? So an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle, right? If it's going to open up to a 180 degree arc, then the angle itself would have to be 90. So for instance, if I have, say we have a diameter right here, Okay, so that's a diameter. If I draw an angle that opens up to that semicircle, okay, what they're saying is this angle right here, because it opens to an intercepted arc, that's a semicircle, that's 180 degrees. So the angle itself is always going to be 90, okay? That X will always be 90 degrees um, every single time. If you have a diameter and the angle opens up with the diameter endpoints as the endpoints of your rays, it'll be a 90 degree angle. Okay, and then corollary number three, says the opposite angles, this is the one I just showed you, the opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary. Okay, so for this one, you have a circle and a quadrilateral inside of it. Okay, so there's your quadrilateral. So angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. If you have a quadrilateral inside, it will always be that opposite angles are supplementary. So basically what we're saying right here is the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three is 180. And the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four is 180. Okay. Any questions on those? Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of each one and then we're done. Any guesses which corollary we're going to do right now? The second one. Right. Um, so you look at this picture and you need to just try to pay attention to the details, okay? There's a diameter. Whenever there's a diameter, look for a 90 degree angle somewhere because with that diameter is a 180 degree arc. If there's an angle that opens up to that, then you're in good shape. So for instance, angle one here, this opens up here and here, just kidding, um, to this intercepted arc, right? Which is 180. So that means my angle one is 90 degrees, okay? If it opens up to a semicircle, it's a 90 degree angle. So the 40 and the 70 mean nothing. They don't help you, they're just there to make you think, okay? Um, so pay attention to what we know. Ignore the stuff that is irrelevant. Questions on that one? All right, second one. You have the 
this picture. That's 38 degrees. That's X degrees. Can you tell me how big X is? Remember, if two angles open to the same arc, so this 38 degrees has this intercepted arc, X has that same intercepted arc. So if those two angles open to the same arc, what's true about those two angles? They're the same, right? So because they both open to this, this would be 76. If you cut that in half, X is 38. The whole point of the add-on, though, is that you don't have to find the 76. If they open to the same arc, they are the same angle. So if that's 38, then this is 38 as well. Okay? And the last one. Actually, so this one kind of combines two of these corollaries. So we have angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. And then this is 60 degrees, and this is 80 degrees. So a couple things to notice. Number one, you have a diameter, which means you have 180 degree arcs in two places. Um, it also means that some of your angles are opening up to that diameter, which makes those 90 degree angles. Can you tell me any of those angles? What'd you say? Cut in half, right? Um, so angle four opens up here. To this arc. So we're going to say the measure of angle four has to be half of those two put together, 80 plus 60, right? Because the angle is half of the arc. So half of 140 would make the measure of angle four 70 degrees. Okay, so four is 70. Um, and what did we say about opposite angles in a quadrilateral? They're not the same. They're supplementary. They add up to 180. So if this is 70, I did not draw that to scale. What's the measure of angle 2? 180 minus 70 or 110 degrees. Okay, so this is 110. Um, and then what's the measure of angle 1? So if you look at angle 1 here, right, here's my angle. That means my intercepted arc right now is that. How big is that arc? It's half a circle, right? It's going to be 90 degrees um, for the angle because the arc is 180. So if that arc is 180, um, then this angle 1 is a right angle. So the measure of angle 1 would be 90 degrees because it opens up to a diameter. So what's the measure of angle 3? The same thing, right? 90 degrees also. Um, where you have to be careful on these is people see this, 90 and 90, and they say, oh, opposite angles are congruent. 
Opposite angles are not congruent. They happen to be on this one. Opposite angles are always supplementary. So if it works out to 90 and 90, then yes, they're congruent, but it could be 89 and 91, right? It could be 82 um, and what would that be? 82 and 98. Um, so just be careful with those that you're not just setting them equal to each other because that's probably what I see done most wrong um, is setting them equal instead of setting them supplementary, okay? Any questions on that?